Hey, what's going on? Welcome into the Daily Score. I am Mark Grody, and this show is coming at you from Hallis Hall, the home of the Chicago Bears. And for the first time this season, the media, we were allowed to watch an entire Bears practice with the entire team. Not everybody was here, but this is well different from the rookie mini camp that we saw because the veterans are here and life was not as easy for Caleb Williams. The defense beat the offense on this day. Caleb Williams and several of the players on the offensive side of the ball learning. Well, everybody is learning a new offense. Some of the other veterans have had some contact with this offense, but there is a learning curve for sure against a very, if I may use a Matt Nagy word, a very callous, um, you know, starting to become experienced defense a lot of red zone work for the offense. I guess the best way I could describe the day for Caleb Williams and the offense is that the defense was just suffocating him today. Everything was tightly contested. There were a couple of overthrows in the end zone from Caleb Williams. Um, even on the tight passes, some of the, the quick passes to DeAndre Swift, who was very active in that regard, just to you know, just get, getting it to him by a hair and then being contested. I saw one play where Caleb Williams caught, or excuse me, DJ Moore caught a pass from Caleb Williams, a short pass, and Jalen Johnson was right there. And, you know, you can't tackle, but he did. you just hear Jalen Johnson chirping out there. And he says, hi, DJ, right there in his face. And, you know, a lot of talking from the defense and, you know, the defense is pumped up because they've been hearing about this offense as well. They've been hearing about Caleb Williams, so it gets their competitive juices going. Um, but, yeah, it was a day in which the defense won. You now, one of the things, and you'll hear from some of the cuts that I'm going to play here for you, is you know the idea that, hey, it's good for Caleb Williams to go up against a good defense like the Bears because this is what he's going to see when it gets real. That is true. That is absolutely true. But pardon me if I'm a little bit jaded when I hear things like that because it was the same stuff we were hitting you over the head with with Mitch Trubisky when the Bears had an elite defense in that 2018 training camp and they were just crushing Trubisky throughout it. And we're not even to training camp yet. That's a different quarterback, a different time. In theory, that's correct, but I'm just telling you what comes to my brain that we've heard all of that before, and I hope it is to his benefit, and I hope he does, you know, that Caleb Williams does begin to, and the offense does begin to catch up, but it would not have been realistic to think that the offense was all of a sudden going to be on the same page as the, the defense. So, no, there's no worry. There's no concern. I'm, I'm going to, you know, sleep well tonight, as you should as a Bears fan, but make no mistake. The defense outplayed the offense today, and Bears wide receiver DJ Moore knew it. Uh, yeah, it's frustrating, but we also know that we we learned in a new system. They've been in that system for what, like three years uh, right now, and then they don't make it no better that they out there having fun with it, and we just frustrated because we ain't uh, accomplishing what we want to. But on the flip side, we know that we still learning and uh, coming together as offense. You relay that to Caleb, like, hey. Right. Yeah, you got to uh, because <laughs> our defense get pretty rowdy, as y'all know, out, out there. So uh, just calming them, calming everybody down in the huddle and just refocusing is the best thing. Yeah, and the, uh, what the receivers weren't perfect either on this date. Saw Travis Homer doing push-ups. That means that he dropped a football. I think Khalil Herbert let one go through his arms at one point in time. So just on the overall, it was not a very sturdy day. Um, for the offense. Again, I'm going to keep with the disclaimers. These are OTAs in the third one at that. So super early, but I'll also just tell you what I saw. Um, let's go to the Bears head coach, Matt Eberflus, and how he is monitoring the progress of Caleb Williams. Yeah, we're doing that with all players, uh, but with, uh, specifically with uh, Caleb. Uh, it's really just about when he you know, can rip the call you know, get the call in and out of the huddle, breaking the huddle, um, having that pace that we need to have. And we've been doing, uh, of course, the walkthroughs, and, and he's been really good with that. And this is a, the first time going against, you know, a, a, a pro defense, you know, and, and a pretty good one. So it's going to be a, a learning uh, for everybody. And uh, they're, they're getting everything together, and uh, it's it was progress. I saw progress from the first day to the second, second to the third. So it's been good. But you do see 
a difference in difficulty for him, for Caleb going up against, as you said, a pro defense? It's, yeah, there's I, – well, I see progress. I, I see progress for sure. And uh, and that's going to continue to be that way. Um, he's been in early, you know, go, stays late, you know, asking questions at night. He's got his iPad at night, you know, in the hotel and been working working his tail off. When you say you yeah, and in, in what regard? Understanding the offense, understanding the concepts, understanding, you know, uh, coverages, understanding where to go with the ball. He's been He's been great that way. It seemed like there was a frustrating – like red zone was frustrating for the offense today. How do you help manage kind of the ups and downs of – I'm sure he wants to do well today, but, you know, you're not playing games today. Yeah, it's uh, – you know, that's a good question. I, I saw I saw a lot of things out there that need to improve on, on defense, you know, and on offense. And, uh, you know, certainly we got to uh, improve in that area. That's going to be a big part for our, our success is the red zone. I talked to the guys about that uh, attention to detail down there, and uh, that's going to be ongoing. One of the other things you should know, too, is that – Flu's conceded that they're throwing a ton at Caleb Williams right now. Like, they're not really holding back. I mean, not, they're not getting 100% of it yet, but they're throwing a lot at him. And the reason that they are throwing a lot at him is because so far, Caleb Williams has shown that he can handle it, that he can remember it, process it, and put it to, to work out there. Whether they're going up again, whether it's 7-on-7, 11 on 11, 11, 11 or just in team drills, they are throwing a tremendous amount at him because he wants to have a lot of it. And they, trust me, you know, seen it with past quarterbacks. If they don't feel they can take as much, they do not throw as much at them. Um, he was very enthusiastic and ready to say that, yeah, yeah, he's got that part down. Um, just, just the processing and the learning that academically it looks like Caleb Williams is in really good shape. Kevin Byer, the – Bears' new safety, who you know looks to be the starter alongside Jaquan Brisker, was great. The the stuff this may have been what you're about to hear from Kevin Byard might have been the best thing I heard today. I mean, of course, all of our focus was on Caleb Williams, justifiably so. But Byard starts talking about the versatility with which his safety partner Jaquan Brisker plays. It's one thing I like about playing with him because I know a little bit of last year was kind of like Bojack was kind of in the back or whatever. He was kind of in the box. I don't want to see that this year, at least for us early on, just kind of working. Hey, let's be versatile. I don't want teams to get a beat on. Hey, you're in the box or I'm deep or anything like that. Let's let's both do the same things uh, so teams can't really get a beat on, you know, what the coverage is. So um, and he's been really good with that. Um, he's vocal like I am about wanting the details of different coverages with the coaches and stuff like that. So uh, he's very coachable. Um, like I say, it's fun to play with, and all the guys in the secondary is like that. So uh, that's what you want. And like I said, the confidence that he has going to year three um, reminds me of myself. Is that something, is that, something that the coaching staff is stressing upon you guys about, like, not having, like, more defined roles? No, I think it's just, I mean, that's what the league is now. You want guys to be versatile. Um, and like I said, I think it's a lot for just for quarterbacks and things like that. Like, as you watch film, uh, teams are looking for any type of keys or clues to tell what type of – what type of defense these guys are going to run. Hey, when we see this guy line up here, this is the coverage. So we don't want to be able to give that away. We want to be able to be versatile and, um, you know, try to make it hard for offenses. Thought that was tremendous. And, you know, just the idea that this is a veteran speaking his mind, essentially, doing his homework on the way Bojack, who is Eddie Jackson, in case you don't know that he uses that handle on his social media, and that's his nickname, Bojack, Eddie Jackson. Um, yeah, that he – Byer wasn't crazy about the way they lined up. I mean, he's not taking shots at Eddie Jackson. He's just kind of saying, hey, you've got to be versatile and you've got to be able to disguise coverages and you can't be predictable. And that's what Byard saw. And that's what we thought he would bring as a veteran player who is, what, 31 years old. So we're not talking about ancient here. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing more from him. And we've got to see it, too. You know, we've, we've got to see – Bayard perform as well. But man, if that's any indication of what we're going to get from him and what he might add to the secondary, that's fantastic. Last thing from Matt Eberflus. I got some notes for you too, but last piece of audio was Matt Eberflus. Um, you know, Javon Dexter looks like, you know, he's going to get a real chance to be the three technique. I mean, I think that's the way they envision it. Nobody's promised him anything. But Matt Eberflus saying some pretty encouraging things today about Jervon Dexter. 
Yeah, I noticed the body composition first. It was really good. He changed his body um, in the time he was off. Uh, so he's much leaner now and he's quicker. Uh, that He really looks good um, in terms of his get off. That was one thing he had to work on. Then pad level because he's such a big guy, tall guy, and he's worked on those things. But uh, his movement, his athletic ability is even better now because of the he really worked at his body. Good to hear. I mean, to me, that sounds like first steps. Like, let's get him in here. That that was what the parent probably told him to do. Um, so, all right, he, he's past that. He's ready to roll. And he, you know, let's see him on the field. He was not out there today. Just going through a few more notes. Javon Dexter was not there. I just I didn't see him out there. They don't have to give us any kind of official attendance on these voluntary practices. They don't have to tell us why guys are not out there unless they want to. So that's why I'm not going to be able to give you much texture, um, except for Keenan Allen. I can give you some. T- he was not out there, but apparently it's his wife and daughter's birthday. So I personally, Mark Grody. We'll give him a pass. Um, Montez Sweat not participating today, nor was Bayless Jones Jr., nor was the starting right tackle, Darnell Wright. Matt Eberflus made it clear, though, that all of these guys have been part of the offseason program so far. We only get to watch one practice a week or even be on the grounds once a week. So they have been out here. There's no issues. There's no holdouts or anything like that. Um so that's the deal with that. So take that however you want. Um, Roma Dunze, well, I saw him. He had had the dealing with a leg injury. I saw him, first guy I saw, jogging out there today. It was good to see that because the last time we were out here, we didn't get to, to see him. Um, he was limited in this particular practice. Um, so it sounds like they're going to ramp him up for next week's OTAs. When I don't know if he's going to be full go, but it sounds like he's on to the next step next week. Ryan Bates was the primary center on this day. We keep talking about a competition at center between Ryan Bates and Coleman Shelton. I don't know. Maybe maybe there won't be a competition or maybe this was just Ryan Bates's day and we'll see Shelton next week. But that's that's what it was. And with no Nate Davis today in practice, the regular right guard, they had the six foot seven Matt prior playing right guard today. Always interesting to see a super, super tall. Usually the big tall guys are on the outside. So you got this massive man on the the inside for, for Caleb Williams in there as well. So that is all for now from Hallis Hall. It was great to get a glimpse of what the Bears are doing, but much, much more to come throughout this preseason for the Chicago Bears right here on the Daily Score. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. I will definitely catch you soon. For Ray Diaz, the executive producer of the Daily Score, I'm Mark Grody. Talk to you soon.